Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Takeo Tuesday. Today's topic is all about FI and CI end suction pumps. Today's presentation will be done by Brett Zerba. My name is Rich Medeiros. And let me give you a little intro before we get started with today's presentation. First, a couple of housekeeping things. You'll notice in the handout sections, we have five handouts that you'll find very useful. Uh, a couple of uh, catalogs and um, installation manuals. Good information. You should download those. That'll be a great thing to uh, take a look at. Just a few words about Taco and myself, and then when Brett comes on, he can chat about himself. For those of you that haven't met us or don't know about Taco, Taco is a manufacturing company located in Cranston, Rhode Island, or I should say headquartered. We actually have locations all over the planet. We celebrated our 100th year anniversary a couple of years ago in the middle of COVID. So we've been in business just over 100 years now and it's owned and operated by the White family. John Hazen White Jr. is in charge of the company and he has a senior management team led by Cheryl Merchant and Cheryl and her team are doing a fantastic job, especially navigating uh, through not only COVID, but now all the supply chain issues that are associated with uh, doing business today. And as I mentioned a minute ago, my name is Rich Medeiros. I'm one of the senior systems engineers, and I will be moderating today's discussion. So as a quick test, if you could type into the question section that you can hear me and see our opening screen, you could see that uh, Brett had um, <clears throat> written out in longhand. He said, hello. Great, I'm getting lots of feedback. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, during the presentation, please type in your questions and then I will ask Brett to pause periodically and we'll try to answer your questions as they come up. Uh, if we have time at the end of the presentation, which we usually do, we'll also answer questions, but you do not have to wait to the end of the presentation in order to have your questions answered. So uh, do that for us. Keep track of your questions, or rather ask your questions during the actual presentation period. So I think I've covered uh, the housekeeping items. Oh, one other thing, this will uh, presentation will, will be recorded and it'll be available roughly 24 hours after the uh, presentation ends, so sometime tomorrow. And then also, if you need to have a certificate for your professional development hours, that will also be available via email. You'll get an email tomorrow, roughly 24 hours from now, and that will allow you to download a certificate. So, Brett, I think I've covered all the housekeeping items. I'm going to turn it over to you to say hello, introduce yourself, and get started. Thank you, Rich. Hi, everyone. Brett Zerba, Applications Engineer, Training Engineer, and a bunch of other things at uh, Taco. I've been with the company over 25 years now. I graduated from the University of New Hampshire. That's Hi, UNH. Mr. That's the. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Can I'm sorry, Brett. I apologize. Okay. I, I'm assuming you're hearing me, though, right, Rich? Um. Yes, Brett. I can hear you yeah. loud and clear. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. Um, University of New Hampshire. That's the Wildcats up there in Durham, New Hampshire. Not too far from the uh, uh, New England coastline, believe it or not. It's only a 20-minute ride. Uh, so in my four four years, and I did graduate in four years, which is uh, uh, a miracle unto itself. Uh, uh, but anyways, uh, I spent a lot of time at the coast. Did my first snorkeling slash scuba diving slash uh, uh, spear fishing uh, at, on the coast of New Hampshire. That was a uh, Quite the experience. I caught a couple of flounder and uh, uh, some, I think they were called blackfish, that they're kind of bottom fish. Um, but uh, you, you spare them in the afternoon, morning, eat, uh, afternoon, and eat them that evening. That, that wasn't a bad, uh, that wasn't a bad gig. So anyways, uh, today's topic, as Rich uh, mentioned, uh, is going to be on FI and CI end suction pumps. Uh, the take uh, you know, end suction pumps. <laughs> very, very common. <coughs> Excuse me. i to get a sip of water. Um, very common in our industry, and uh, you know we we assemble these products uh, at our facility in Cranston, Rhode Island. And I bet you some of you have been to that facility and have witnessed uh, our folks out there assembling them 
and they continue to assemble and we work two shifts a day assembling uh, products uh, out there at our factory uh, and uh, FI and CIs are, are, are some of them. So here's a, a picture of what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to spend most of the time on the ones on the left-hand side, the FI pump and the CI pump. But I am going to touch base on these a little bit, probably right now, uh, our SCI pump and our SFI pump. Actually, in June, in the month of June, one of our Takeo Tuesdays is going to have a lot more uh, uh, a focus on the uh, the drives, uh, the the what we call self-sensing drives. It's going to be focused on the KV pumps, but the drives are the same. Uh, one of our vertical inline pumps, uh, but the the drives themselves are the same. So we're going to really uh, talk about starting those up and some of the uh, some of the uh, requirements of those, and and, and give you a little uh, more information about uh, about those products. But our 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 end suction pumps, the FI and CI, you can also order with a, uh, a a drive it is not attached or mounted to the pump it comes separate on the uh, uh, uh on the little uh, um, uh wooden cr uh, pallet that it comes on but nonetheless it uh, it is a, a very integral part of the, of that uh, drive so um, uh, uh, please keep that in mind by the way if this is an fi3009 that's our model number if this is a ci3009 the wet ends for the SCI3009 and the SFI3009 and the CI3009 and the FI3009 are all the same. And when I talk about the wet end, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of uh, explode into that uh, very shortly. So uh, just keep that in mind. And that's common in our industry. That's that's not unusual. Um, uh, so if you order a CI pump or an FI pump um, uh, with the same model numbers and nomenclature, uh, same horsepower, same impeller, all that stuff. Uh, the, the characteristics, the flow characteristics are the same. And again, uh, green pumps, uh, feel free to uh, basis of design and, and specify them all uh, to your heart's content. But the red ones and the blue ones and the other color ones, uh, that's the same for their uh, for our competitors as well. So here's some of the uh, details of a FI Takeo FI uh, base mounted pump. So I just talked about it, right? In in, in our industry. Uh, Rich was just doing a presentation the other day, and uh, someone asked, uh, it, it wasn't had anything to do with uh, this topic per se, and someone asked this uh, piece of terminology, and Rich had covered it, but it was a, a different name. And, and what I'm trying to uh, spit out here or get out of my head is a lot of the terminology is uh, is the same in our industry. So this this someone might call this a casing, you're in a meeting, or a wet end, or a volute. They're, they're all the same, right? It, it all means the same thing. Uh, so, uh, it, you know, uh, there may even be other names out there uh, for some of these. This is the bearing frame right here. This this connects on an FI pump that connects the impeller, the the, the impeller that's mounted in here that actually rotates and, and moves the water to the um, uh, to the to the coupler, and then the coupler and the motor shaft. So there's two different shafts. So there's a shaft that runs right through here. Now I'll show you some cutaways of that. And then it, it gathers into a coupler and then the motor shaft is on the other end. So this is called, um, uh, it, to some people's terminology, a split, split coupled pump, meaning that there's a gap in the shaft. There's two different shafts. There's a motor shaft and then there's the uh, impeller shaft. And again, there may be other terminologies for some of that, but nonetheless, um, uh, uh, that's important to realize. Bearing frame with a foot support, you can kind of see it here, there's the bearing, and then there's a foot support right here that supports it nice and sturdy, uh, so that doesn't uh, cantilever down. You know, it's a, it's cantilevered, but it's got a support there. Um, so from your um, moments classes or, uh, or whatnot, obviously it uh, takes away some of the stresses, uh, and that's important. We have a C-channel base uh, uh, mounted all the way around here, so it's pretty, very, very solid, very, very solid. Um, uh, it, it's all welded together and you can see some cross supports here as well. Um, and then there's a plate right here that this mounts to, but on top of the plate, we actually have a, a drip pan. And you'll see that there's the motor, uh, uh, super efficiency. They're all a higher efficiency motor nowadays. Um, uh, our, one of our standards is Baldor, but the, there are other motors out there. And, and some of our manufacturers reps um, will, will actually uh, buy this pump less motor and keep it on their shelves. So some, you know, the 80-20 rule. So if they if they have some, 
to, to get it out to the uh, uh, to, to the uh, market as quick as possible, uh, then they could put a different motor on it. And you'll notice you'll notice under here there's a, there's there's a couple of uh, little sh what I'll call shims, and this is the motor base plate right here, right? There's a, there's two of them, right? There's one on each side. So this base is designed to actually carry six different motor frames, six different motor frames. So this is the biggest one. So you only need some shims there to make sure it's all level and aligned properly. Uh, so the, two of the motor frames would sit on that. And, I, and I'm just going to uh, say some motor frame numbers. And they, 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 there are different motor frames uh, for, for these uh, 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 motors. Uh, I'll say a, a 254 and a 256 frame would sit right on here. Well, then maybe the um, uh, 187 and 185, I believe, frame would sit on here with another with a spacer so that you would actually get the pump with a spacer on it and another spacer. And then the smaller frames, right? When I say smaller, the motor diameter is smaller, but the, the so the the actual center line of the shaft to where this mounts here is less, right? So that uh, the H dimension, height H dimension goes down for all these frames. So the 143, 145 frame is even smaller. So there would actually be two spacers here um, uh, in order to uh, accommodate that. So just something that uh, it, it's more for your uh, knowledge and, and notice, uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, you, you might see that out there. Coupler guard, uh, we do have a coupler guard standard on our, our, on our pumps, uh, and we can also offer a OSHA coupler guard as well. Flange suction on the suction and discharge, you can see that nice and nice and tidy right there. Very, very common in our industry. Very, very common in our industry. Um, and these are 125 pound flanges, ANSI flanges. Uh, you can also get this product with a 250 pound ANSI flange and uh, everything's the same except the flanges are different. Um, uh, so uh, just keep that in mind. Actually, that's not true. The actual material of construction is different. Uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean by that um, uh, when we go there. And then we do have the drip pan with a drain right here. Um, uh, you don't get a lot of, of fluid out of here. And this isn't for a catastrophic failure. It's more for just some dripping that might come when, uh, when the piping's there um, and weeping at the startup or, or whatnot. I, I've seen some people attach uh, maybe an elbow to that to get it down, but uh, not, not everybody does uh, attach that. Um, as well. And that might be a little differentiator. So not, a, not all of our um, uh, competitors offer a drip pan as a standard. So, but we do, we do on ours. And then we do have capped gauges, on, uh, gauge ports on the suction and discharge. Um, it's a little hard to see uh, one of them, but nonetheless, you can uh, uh, put your gauges right on there if you'd like. And uh, uh, I'm going to mention it later in the presentation. But Rich and I are firm believers. The more gauges you, you, you put on your details, the better. So if you have some MEP uh, uh, drawings, you get as a, you know so, so, somebody in your office, take a look at the, the pump MEP drawing. And maybe uh, it may be on the piping. It could be right on the pump. But uh, put the gauges on the suction and discharge. It's, it's a big recommendation. And you can see there is a drain port down here as well. Obviously, there's no uh, cap in there right now. But uh, so, you know, you can drain. That pump can be drained out. Um, uh, if, if need be, um, as you go. So pretty much uh, a, a lot of the stuff that's uh, re required there. This is the CI pump. Here's a little uh, a, a picture of the CI pump, and it does have an interly cast foot on it. Actually, the, 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 the FI has it as well because it's the same casing, but you can see it right there, so it is cast. And, and uh, this is a big differentiator from Takeo's um, uh, commercial products uh, to, to many of our other competitors. All of our commercial products, including the welded products, so our tanks, our heat exchangers, and, and uh, whatnot, have a e-link Takeo connectivity, a Takeo tag, and there's actually a couple of them on, on pumps. And that tag um, uh, allows you. It's it's actually a dumb uh, a dumb piece of uh, instrument, but it has NFC. It's not it's not electrical or anything like that. It's an NFC tag, and if you uh, have uh, uh, the, the the proper level iPhone, which most of us have nowadays, and you can use the Takeo app, or if you have the, have the NFC right on your phone, you put it up there, take like you're taking a picture, and it downloads all the information associated with it, um, with with that pump, it, it, all of the uh, nameplate, and you can see here that we've got different pictures of where it's located and different spots there uh, on our commercial products. But it um, uh, it downloads all the information on the pump, so it downloads all the nameplate data. It downloads all the uh, the, the uh, access to the CAD drawings, access to the replacement parts, uh, who 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 bought it, or who, which rep, Takeo rep, how to contact Takeo, 
uh, I mean, mo more information than, than than you can shake a stick at. So uh, really, uh, feel free to put that in your spec that the uh, uh, HVAC hydronic pumps need to have a TACO tag. I mean, excuse me, a, a NFC chip on them. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Anyways, I, I digress sometimes, but uh, nonetheless, uh, that is a, a pretty handy product. Uh, and if you ever get to our factory and take a tour, uh, mo most of the people I walk around for tours, they'll take their phone and, uh, you know, seeing is believing, right? They're from Missouri, the show me state. So they'll try it. And, and sure enough, it works. Uh, it works. So that's pretty good. <laughs> Thank God. But so, you can Brett, we do have a, uh, a quick question. I think you Excellent. already answered. Um, uh, but it's worth asking again, just in case someone else missed it. And yeah. uh, and I know you answered it, but here it goes. Are there any factory ports for pressure readings? Yep. I, I, I they said ports, right? So we do have tap gauge ports on our pumps. Um, I, I, there's one on the section and discharge. This this picture you can't see the one on the on the uh, suction, but you can see the one on the discharge. So um, uh, the answer is yes to to that question. I, I believe I answered that correctly, didn't I, Rich? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. So here's uh, another, uh, let's see. Oh, yes, a person made a comment. This is, I like I like this comment. Um, and the comment is, proud Missourian here, guarantee I'd scan it for to see for myself. Well, that, you're, we'd love to have you come out to the factory. And uh, in fact, if you come out to the factory, uh, we'll escort you around the factory, and you can scan as many as you like. That's right. That's right. Get get uh, uh, if you if you'd like to come visit, get in touch with your TACO rep, uh, who, whoever it is, uh, where you're located in Missouri. I think we have a couple that uh, uh, the, that that cover the Missouri market. Uh, I know Behrman's one of them, but the, there could be another one on, on, on a different part. But anyways, uh, um, uh, and uh, we have trips. Matter of fact, Rich and I. Uh, have what we call a TACO University uh, starting uh, Tuesday of next week. Actually, the, the guests arrive Wednesday night. So uh, some of our Northeast uh, reps and some of our Central Region reps are bringing some guests into TACO, uh, and they'll be spending two nights, uh, two nights in Providence, Rhode Island, and uh, a day and a half at our factories, two factories, as a matter of fact. And, and I bet you, I bet you, they'll be showing me that tag, uh, show me on that tag, like the Missourian would be doing. So uh, tap NFC tag for product info and support. And here's here's an example of all the information you can get. It, it, it's for a uh, expansion tank, but nonetheless, you get the product profile, uh, parts and documents, um, a contact a sales rep. So this one here was uh, purchased by Hydronic Systems. Um, uh, EMAD, you can email the CAD and Revit drawings or send them to your email, send them to a co colleague's email, uh, and then ask uh, TACO. And uh, if you call during normal working hours, a person will actually, good chance, a person will actually answer the phone at TACO. That's pretty impressive, isn't it, Rich? <laughs> yeah. In fact, we, we have another uh, uh, question. It says, do FI and CI pumps both come with e-link TACO tags? They do. They do. Matter of fact, uh, yeah, yes, they do. You can kind of see this here. Uh, this is an FI pump, I can tell, because it's mounted on a base. Uh, so you can see some of these uh, mounted it. And, and I, I, I want to expound on that uh, uh, comment slash answer. Uh, not only do the FICIs come with it, but the KVs, KSs come with it, if you know some of our other nomenclature and our model numbers. Also the TAs and the VC and TCs and, and whatnot. So uh, uh, other, as well as the expansion tanks and the heat exchangers. So uh, they come with the, those tags as well. Great questions. Good questions today, Rich, already. I know it. <clears throat> uh, I, I, I like to put, put, uh, put this up here, um, uh, how important it is, uh, re really. Uh, I'm going to talk for a few minutes, but the important thing is add to your spec that all HVAC hydronic pumps must meet DOE requirements. Boom. Put that in your spec, and then you're covered. Uh, us pump manufacturers had to work very, very hard, uh, and you can see what which pumps we're talking about over here. Um, uh, which ones uh, are uh, to, to uh, uh, meet the D Department of Energy um, uh, came up with some uh, 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 efficiency, uh, I'll say guidelines, but requirements that the pumps had to meet. And, and really what the goal was, and this, this program started back in 2011 uh, with all us pump manufacturers. So uh, we've been working on it for a long time. And, and it's been out in the industry now for uh, since 2020. 
Uh, so, well, uh, what, a year and a half, two and a half years, uh, just before uh, everything closed down. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the, the models for us are FICIKBKKS in 1900s so had to meet these DOE requirements up to 200 horsepower. And, and by the way, this is very important, the nominal speeds of 1800 and 3600. So us pump manufacturers, and not just us, the red guys and the blue guys and the other color guys, uh, colored uh, pump manufacturers, uh, did not have to meet um, uh, for, thir uh, for 1200, uh, nominal speed 1200 RPMs. But it did not include circulators, this is a separate uh, rule, and the uh, what they considered fire pumps, even though they're not, Fire pumps, the GTs, our GTs, TA and TC pumps. But nonetheless, uh, all the manufacturers meet it out there. Uh, so, uh, but I do like to at least touch upon it. And uh, we're very proud because our engineers, uh, here's the labeling we had to do. And you can have the PEI um, uh, display this performance labeling. Um, uh, you have to put that on there. I'm, I'm, I'm spazzing rich, but PEI, uh, What's that mean again? <laughs> performance <laughs> energy index. That's it. Performance energy index. I, sometimes uh, us old people, we forget things as soon as we talk about it. But it nonetheless, like it should, you can... there should be a song that goes along with that, right? <laughs> like performance energy index. E I E I O. No? All right. Yeah, I, I, like say it. I like it. Uh, anyways, uh, you can uh, the the us us manufacturers have to put that number right on here on our labels and, and whatnot, and it can be a CL one for constant load or VL for variable load. So um, many of the pumps now, this our self sensings that come with a integral drive, right, uh, can be rated with the VL rating. Uh, otherwise, it's a CL rating. But there's a whole uh, we actually have an hour presentation about this DOE stuff, uh, but. I think I think that's the, that's the, the the basic information you, you need to know. Here's our operating spec. Any, any other questions on, on? I don't think there's any questions on DOE. I hope not. <laughs> I, I I do like to add though um, that our our uh, uh, R and D engineers worked very hard with their three D three D modeling on our N suction and our KVKS pumps, the pumps that we had to redesign. Our our, our 1900s already met it, so we didn't have to redesign those. Uh, the ones that we had to read, some of the models that we had to redesign, and we've leapfrogged the competitors. Uh, uh, for for so our our base our the pumps I'm talking about today, our base mounted pumps, our FIs and CIs, over 60% of our models in combination of models are the highest efficiency in, in the industry. On the vertical lines, the KV and KSs, it's upwards over 80%. Very very proud of that fact. And uh, uh, many of you uh, have been around uh, for, for, for probably longer than me, and you uh, probably uh, uh, are surprised to hear that because I don't think Taco was always known for their high uh, to be have the highest efficiency. And uh, nowadays we do, and uh, that's a, that, that's a, that's a fact, Jack. So here's some of the uh, uh, operating specifications. Again, remember that I told you the flange. Um, is 125 pounds ANSI class flange. You can get uh, the option of, of a 250. So, you know, on a high riser, a higher rise building, or for whatever reason, if you need 250, uh, uh, it's available. Uh, the pressure ratings uh, up to um, uh, uh, 175 PSI is standard. Again, you can get up to the 370 PSI. Um, the pressure ratings uh, above 150. Uh, there is a ban uh, ANSI chart, so it does go down a little bit, but it's not a lot. Percentage-wise, it's not a lot. So I, I, for most of our applications, probably well over 95% of them, 90% of them, um, uh, I wouldn't even worry about it, even if you have a hot water application. And anyways, the standard is 250 degrees um, uh, that 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 you can get qual qualified in that. We do recommend. Um, if you have a uh, operating temperature above 250, a flush line is required for optimum seal life. And above 225, we recommend a flush line um, um, uh, anyways. It, it just, it, it say, it get, get, if to get more information on this, talk to your t local TACO rep uh, and they'll explain what we're talking about. But it really is just a, a way to keep the, uh, uh, the, the seal cool. Makes sense, right? The the operating temperature is up so high that uh, even though it's probably within, it's still within the specifications of the of the seal. It, it's just going to, uh, I, I think they do degrade 
at, at a certain temperature or or their life expectancy isn't as long at, a, at, at the higher temperatures. So you flush it. You, you, you just keep it uh, 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 cool like that. Here's some of the material of constructions. Uh, as you can see here, I'm not going to go through it all. I, I, I do want to point this out. The casing for the low, uh, the standard uh, uh, rating is just a ASTMA A848, A48, whatever, it is, class 30A. I'm not going to say pig iron, but it, it's pretty much a, a, a red, regular ductile, a regular cast iron. The 250, it is a ductile iron, so it does give you more strength. It does give you more strength. Pretty much everything else is the same uh, in in that regard. Um, uh, the seals, uh, I, I think, uh, just about everything is 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 the same as I as I look at it very quickly. Although uh, you you can get some options. Uh, uh, the the FIs and CIs do not have a wear ring uh, as a, a standard, but uh, you can get it as an option if you'd like. Uh, I, I think they were more prevalent uh, way back when when manufacturers weren't and tolerances weren't as uh, critical. Nowadays, uh, the tolerances and, and, and the manufacturing processes are are much much better for all of us pump manufacturers. That uh, personally, they're probably not uh, re really required, but nonetheless, uh, if it's in your spec, it is available. As you can see, and, and I do see some uh, engineering firms have the higher graded seals as a standard. So uh, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and there's a whole whole litmus uh, of information about the seals. Uh, it's a John Crane, and I think they 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 cornered the market for all of us, uh, us pump manufacturers for the most part. So uh, you know HVAC hydronics. It's supposed to be a relatively clean uh environment uh kept free free of chemicals well uh, i i think in reality uh from a practical standpoint many of us realize that that's probably that's not the case uh so uh keep that in mind and, and a lot of times you don't know you may not know so you may want to upgrade if if for some reason you've had a problem on a project and you know it's just one of those things that piles up on your desk and it's not worth worth the effort upgrade the seal in your spec and bingo, bango, bongo, and maybe there's not a not an issue down there. And then, you know, seal flush line assembly, we see that in people's specifications quite a bit as well. Uh, so that comes uh, st could, could come as an option with the pump as well. So we do offer NSF 61, uh, uh, class 23 for chilled water only. Um, uh, and so here's some of that uh, standard of construction. So for chilled water, we do offer NSF uh, 61 uh, for, for our pumps. Uh, here, uh, this is the process. So uh, one of the products that's important on a pump is impellers, right? So um, you, you can see here, we, we uh, our process, our manufacturer uses a lost foam process. I'm going to show you some pictures of it. And so you can see a, a picture of a, uh, a lost foam uh, uh, impeller on the left and a standard sand domestic impeller on the on the right. And uh, is that right? Left and right. Yes. As I'm looking at them, whew, down below it's opposite, but nonetheless, um, uh, so they're one's domestic, one's off offshore. Most of them come in from offshore. They're rougher. The sand casting are rougher, and they're not as repeatable. The lost foam method, very repeatable, uh, very smooth, and anytime uh, the less resistance internally in a pump. Excuse me. And we've talked about uh, resistance in, internally in pumps uh, on some of our other presentations. Um, the better, the higher the efficiency. So when we were, and this was quite a few years ago, we went to this process uh, for the lost foam or our, our supplier did, and uh, that it helped us get improve our, our efficiency on our pumps uh, a couple, 3%. So that's a, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. And really what it is, it's just a, a foam piece. So uh, these these are, so the engineers uh, get, get our CAD drawings emailed to them, and this pr piece is made, Right, and then th that is actually put into a so so. There's the final impeller, right? The double suction or single suction, excuse me, and then uh, dipped in a foam and it is dipped in a clay slurry. So there's that that foam piece is dip, dipped in a slurry and it's and we let it dry or the, the the manufacturer lets it dry, and then it's investment casting. So the foam is actually vaporized. You can you know it's put in a barrel. Um, and uh, the sand is put all around it, uh, packed in there. It kind of goes down a conveyor, and then that that 
that impeller vaporizes or the foam piece and vaporizes. And there's the uh, final product down there. No tooling wear. Very, very repeatable. Very, very repeatable. And I think um, if, if anyone's ever uh, worked with sand castings uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in one, one, one part of your career or, or whatever, uh, over time, they, do, they, they aren't as repeatable. You can lose a couple percentage uh, of them over time, or they'll have to be re, uh, remade, manufactured. Uh, this, this is a very repeatable process, so uh, something, to, something that differentiates us there uh, in their way. Dry shaft design, another uh, uh, item of the uh, CI and FI pumps. Uh, so uh, uh, protects the pump shaft by eliminating contact between the shaft and circulating fluid. So the fluid fills up in here. We have a dry shaft design, so nothing gets uh, internal in there. Uh, sleeves on, slides on with no additional tools required. Very, very, it, it prevents uh, sh uh, shaft corrosion, prevents shaft corrosion. Uh, so that's our dry shaft design. And there's a uh, there, there's a, a cutaway or a, an explosion of, of a seal right there, one of the seals, and we'll talk about seals uh, uh, very shortly. So this is what they call a cover on a pump. And again, uh, obviously these are green, right? You're, you're listening to a Taco presentation. You can see green green all over the my my drawing here. But the the, the other manufacturers have the same uh, same same components. Stationary seat. So this is the stationary piece here. There's the pump shaft. This is the rotating element of a seal right here. Slip on shaft sleeve, so that slips on the shaft right there. And there's the impeller uh, as it mounts uh, right there. And as we've uh, described in other presentations, these veins, these are called veins inside the impeller and they're curved, they're curved. And who's gonna type in which way does this rotate? Is this gonna rotate up or is it gonna rotate down? If you remember from, my other, uh, from some of our other presentations, those curvatures, do not scoop water, they throw water. So that would be rotating um, up towards the top or, or towards the D on this page. So, so it's, you know, it's nice to know, uh, obviously, how important is this on, in your daily routines? Uh, but the more knowledge we have in our head, the better, right? Uh, although I think my head's just about full with enough knowledge. I can only add one or new, new, two new things a day, uh, I, I finally figured out. And this O-ring creates a seal against the back of the impeller. Uh, as well. So that's uh, in that sleeve. And you can see the pump shaft with some threading there as well. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, we already talked about this. I don't need to go into too, too many details here. There is a Dowdy watcher there. So uh, a lot of these components, uh, you know, if you're going to start changing seals, uh, make sure you have a, a spare one, especially O-rings, right? Uh, any, any type of product, uh, you know, when you change them and start, uh, 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 you know, servicing them, uh, change O-rings every time. Uh, I mean, is there a possibility that the existing O-ring is going to be, be okay? Yes, but uh, God, God forbid that that you put everything back together and it leaks uh, because of the O-ring uh, is flat in one way or, or something like that. Put a new one in there. It, it, it'll save you some issues there in that regard. And our impeller bolts um, uh, on our pumps as well. Impeller, and that's the back of the impeller, seals against the shaft O-ring. And there's a good picture of the cover um, on our drag shaft design. Bearing life. All right, I talked about the bearings before. Here's a nice little picture of one of our bearing frames. You can see the foot support I talked about earlier. And there's that shaft. And what did I call this? This is the impeller shaft. So this end here, right, that's where the impeller mounts on that end. You, you, you kind of got a detail of that in some of the earlier pictures. We have sealed for life bearings in here. So there are two bearings to help support that shaft going through the bearing frame. We have sealed for life bearings now. Uh, we, we've uh, uh, changed that and it's been quite a few years now. And the L L10 life on our bearings is well over 60,000 hours. Uh, I, I think we can only advertise 60,000, but if you actually, and we could actually do calculations. Um, if you go through our Taco rep, um, they can actually have bearing life calculations done. On some critical jobs, every once in a while, we'll see that um, as a requirement. So uh, our engineers uh, at, at the factory, uh, can, some of our product engineers can actually do those calc. But nonetheless, so those are sealed for light bearings, meaning they don't require any lubrication. All right, and we actually have a special for sheet of seal on this back edge here, <laughs> excuse me, that protects 
from dust going in or grime or, you know, mechanical rooms aren't necessarily always the cleanest, uh, cleanest area at, at a building, right? Probably all the time, but nonetheless, uh, we have a Fresheta seal there. Um, uh, so we do have seal for light bearings in our bearing frames. Although, although if you talk to your Takeo rep, for whatever reason, if it's in a specification, an older spec, and, you, and the project requires uh, bearings that re, uh, require uh, uh, lubrication, uh, we can still provide those as well. So um, uh, don't think we, we, we force people. I mean, we strongly recommend, and, and personally, I would uh, I would go away with this. I mean, it, it, most of our reps, if they if they explain it to a to a customer or an end user, they're like, oh, we don't have to lubricate. Oh, give me that one. I want that one. So uh, something to consider in that regard. And there's that Fashita seal I was talking about. So it does help protect from external uh, components coming in there. Moisture too, right? Moisture. Yeah, you don't want anything in that cavity, right? That's just going to cause issues and, and whatnot. Believe it or not, uh, when I started uh, with the company over 25 years ago, one of my uh, projects was to uh, investigate. Uh, we were having bear bearing frame uh, uh, issues, um, failures. So I uh, had I took some apart, and I actually seen some. This was well before we went to these type. <laughs> Excuse me. This whole cavity was filled with grease. So it may have been over greased. Not that I'm saying it was, but I think it was, right? The whole cavity was filled. It was on their maintenance schedule. So every, every once a week, once a month, whatever it was, a guy came and squirted in there and filled it up, even though he didn't require, didn't require it. And he, he filled up the whole cavity with grease. So um, don't, keep, keep the seal for light bearings, <laughs> in other words. Pump couplings. So the two shafts, right, the motor shaft, and this is on the FI now, the motor shaft and the impeller shaft uh, are joined together with a, a, a coupling. We use the Woods uh, uh, Duraflex coupling as a standard. I've talked about it on our and some of our other, other stuff, uh, other presentations. It's the, these, the, this product is, is, is ideal for all applications, all right, and it's superior for variable speed applications. Well, uh, I, I think most of us on, on, on today's uh, discussion realize that variable speed is uh, what 95% of our of projects nowadays. Um, uh, so uh, the, the old style, what we call the old style, Sureflex, uh, have had those uh, little uh, teeth in it, and uh, uh, we had some issues on variable speed projects. I don't know if other uh, other people did, but nonetheless, uh, we, we have uh, used Duraflex now. Uh, highly misalignment, high misalignment ratings. Uh, although, please, please make sure you follow the INO manual and, and, and put it in your specification that, that uh, especially over what, 10, 15, 20 horse, you have those shafts uh, laser aligned. It's all spelled out in some of the documentation um, you, you can there. No, no maintenance, no lubrication, good chemical resistance. So very, very solid product uh, that, that is standard on our FI pumps. Uh, externally flush seals. So uh, th this is a setup that that can be done. Uh, we, we wouldn't do all this, but the, uh, so, so some of these uh, components are part of the uh, downloads you can download from our uh, from today's webinar. But it's an external flush, and that just helps clean that seal. Uh, we say it's external flush, but it's really system fluid. So, but nonetheless, you you can see that here. And by the way, by the way, this is something that's important. This is a piece of, I'll say, trim. Uh, that's what us manufacturers call it. Maybe the reps do, maybe you folks do, but it's it, it's it's a product, it's called a suction diffuser. Very, very common in our industry, very common in our industry. You'll see it has a, uh, you know, a strainer in there. It's just a, a, a wire piece with the holes in it, right? Um, uh, so it's, you know, it's the last line of protection for the suction of the pump. The Taco suction diffuser if you read the manual is sent out with a startup strainer sent out with a startup strainer well after startup that strainer needs to be removed it's very fine mesh very fine mesh and i am more than once i've been involved with the startup strainer getting into the pump because it's very fine mesh and eventually if it's it can get pulled through there are pieces of it or you'll see it in there and all of a sudden the pressure ratings will go wacky or maybe it'll cause other problems. So nonetheless, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, that needs to be spelled out, or or somebody needs to read the INO manual. Um, uh, you know, uh, 
hopefully they, they realize it. Any questions, Rich? I've been yapping for a while. How are we doing? Actually, uh, uh, a question did come up, and I did a little research while you were uh, oh, showing good. some more interesting pieces. So the, the question came up from Jim Prisby. He says, oh, regarding boy. bearing lubrication, does a new pump with greasable bearings need to be greased when it is first installed, or is it already greased and you reference to the maintenance schedule? So I actually looked this up, Brett. You're going to be so proud of me. Excellent. And I looked it up specifically for an FI pump because a CI actually uses the motor shaft. So, right. uh, and the motor itself has regreasable bearings, I believe. Yeah. But the pump uh, does not. So this applies to the FI series pumps. And, and, the, and the bearing frame we're talking. And about. the bearing frame. And it says in our installation manual, it says for SI pumps with optional regreasing bearings and all FE pumps, which is the older model, follow instructions below. And it says bearings are initially lubricated during manufacture. The regreasable interval depends upon the running speed of the unit. So for 1750 RPM, we say the regreasing interval is 4,250 hours. And for 3450 RPM, the regreasing interval is 2,000 hours. Boy, that was that was good stuff, huh? Yeah. You know what that means? Use seal for light bearings. <laughs> <laughs> Don't add complexity. Keep it simple, right? Keep it simple. I, I'm a simpleton. Keep it simple. But anyways, great, great Jim, question. Jim says, Jim says I get a gold star. That's good. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, we'll um, see him next week. Jim's coming in next week. We'll, we'll, is he? We'll give him a gold star. Yeah, he's 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 uh he's he'll be in on Monday, and so we'll see him Tuesday and Wednesday. Very exciting. So we have a couple of other quick questions. Yeah. It says uh, the question. I'm not sure if you covered this, but it says when to remove startup strainer. And then the other uh, follow-up question from the same individual is that the startup strainer in this photo? So do you have the startup strainer? There it is. Look at that. That is not the startup strainer. The startup strainer actually nestles inside of that, and it's a very fine mesh. That is a permanent, what you're looking at right here, let me get my little uh, spotlight. This component right here um, is a, uh, a final, it's in there. That, that, that that's, sits right in there. The startup strainer actually goes inside of it. And um, I, I, so uh, let, let's, let's talk this out, Rich. Me and you will have a little conversation. You start up a system, right, and you run it over the weekend or, or overnight. The next day, you should take up the startup strainer. As long as, uh, you know, you've you, you got everything started up, um, boom, you can take out the startup strainer. What, what do you think? I mean, it's not after a week. I, I, I would well, think it's – Well, you know, it's, it's uh, system dependent. Um, yeah, good point. It, I mean, when, a, when someone is installing a brand-new system um, – you know, where was the pipe before it was right. physically installed? Was it sitting out in the weather in a in a you know in a dirt pile with wind and dust and rain for eight months? That that pipe has got all kinds of junk inside of it. And so when you put it into a system and you start it up, it's going to take quite a while to get all of that uh, material out of the pipe. But obviously, you know, let's say you were doing a modification. I'm just kind of doing an, an extreme here. If you're doing a modification uh, of an existing piping system and your supplier delivered the pipe and put it inside your nice, clean, filtered and um, ventilated mechanical room and the ends of the pipe were covered over, um, very a care, lots, of, lots of care taken on the pipe. And then you install it in the system. The pipe's going to be clean. It's only going to take a very short time to uh, use that startup strainer. And in some cases, we've seen in very severe cases that they had to replace the startup strainer two or three times in order to get all the material out before they ran it as a normal operation. But you know, uh, in terms of uh, piping and, and systems in general, not just because of pumps, but obviously we're talking about pumps here, but you want to make sure that system is as clean as possible because if there's a lot of junk in the system, it can clog up heat exchangers, it can raise havoc with uh, chillers and boilers, it's just, we want that water to be as clean as possible. Good point. And uh, um, I, I, I do know uh, Rich, uh, Rich was heavily involved, and I was a little involved in a, an expansion at Takeo that's over 10 years old now, 
we added 24,000 square feet, a two-story addition. And uh, so we, we did add, add some more heating and ventilation of a piping, you know, hydronic piping to, to the system. And they start when they started it up, they ran it over the weekend. So they started it up on a Friday afternoon. They ran it over the weekend. You know, the, obviously they were there for a while and let it run. Uh, and and uh, if you think about it, the, they used our, our, our 4,900. Believe it or not, on a project at our facility, we used our products on it. That's unbelievable, isn't it, Rich? Thank that's God. A, that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, uh, th that's another whole discussion, our, our uh, coalescing uh, air and dirt removal. So they, they, they ran the system overnight, uh, over the weekend. When they came in on Monday, they shut it down and they took, up the start, took out the startup strainer. Was that a pretty dirty system? Uh, the Mets are Mets, uh, but, but, you know, it was a typical, it wasn't a big job, right? 24,000 square feet, but, you know, it was a lot of piping and, and whatnot. But uh, that that's what they did on that particular project. But like Rich said, it's uh, project dependent and, and whatnot. Great questions, though, Rich. Great questions. Yeah, you know, the, 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 the moral of the story is the piping can never be too clean. Right. <laughs> or the system of the water flow can never be too clean. Good point. So. We're, we're going to change a little bit and just give you some basic pump piping rules, okay? Uh, keep suction piping as short as possible, right? So, uh, you know, don't 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 have a lot of it. Obviously, it's got to come down. But, you know, maybe if you think about a typical one, it drops down and t ties in. But uh, as you get closer to that pump, keep that closer, right? Suction pipe diameter. So this is the suction pipe diameter. Should be equal or greater than the pump inlet. So if you have a six inch inlet, make sure you have six inch piping or greater going into that pump. To stay away from four or three inch in my particular example. Um, uh, try to eliminate elbows mounted on or close to the inlet nozzle of the pump. Um, uh, you know, include the suction diffuser. Although uh, ideally uh, we'd like to see five to 10 pipe diameters. And, you know, other office, each office may have their own number of straight run of pipe. Uh, HVAC hydronic pumps do not like turbulence in the water coming in. It's gonna cause, uh, could cause all kinds of issue. Uh, NPSH as an, as an example, it could cause vibration. It could cause noise, uh, short, shorter life on a pump. So make sure that inlet piping is done correctly and, and, and whatnot. Watch orientation of elbows on double suction pumps. So make sure they're done correctly. And you can see which way they need to be done in our I and O manuals as well. Eliminate the potential for air pockets in the suction piping. So don't don't go up and around and you know on a condenser pipe. Sometimes we, you'll see it come come out of the uh, you know the 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 the, um, the bottom of the uh, deck, and as it's going into the pump, it, it goes up and over a, a piece. So there's an, a potential for an air pocket. Try to try to make sure that that's not done uh, because you get air into the system. Or, or an air pocket, it's going to it's going to cause issues of, of the flow, and, and this is very very important. Uh, I always like to say these couple of words: P pipe away, pump pipe away from the pump. Support piping to ensure it does not cause strain on the pump casing. Okay, so the pump casing isn't designed to support that piping, right? You're going to put a flange on it and and, and whatnot, uh, and maybe a little. Uh, Piece, a short piece of pipe or, or the suction diffuser, pipe, pipe away from it. If it's a 90 going right into that, so, or a straight run of pipe going into that suction diffuser, make sure that that piece coming down is supported properly uh, wherever it comes down from. Make sure that hanger is close to, the, close to it or, or, or whatnot. Uh, so pipe away, support piping to ensure it does not. There's plenty of other rules uh, or basic uh, uh, stuff, but these are some of the ones um, that 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 uh, it, it, it caught, they cause issues on pumps and uh, um, it, it, us us pump manufacturers like to tell people pumps don't suck, <laughs> even though a lot of times people think they do. Uh, any any addition to that, Rich? <laughs> any addition to some of these basic rules? <laughs> yeah, well, I would. <clears throat> I want to clarify the very first statement, and uh, we want to. Yeah, keep no, it, it is a little clue. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice here. Yeah. We want to keep the suction piping as short as possible on an open system. So when you're running piping between the cooling tower and the pump, um, the net positive suction head that's available becomes a function of the pressure drop. So if you have a very, very lengthy pipe between the cooling tower, open cooling tower, and the suction side of the pump, 
that pressure drop may be more than what the uh, pump uh, is looking for, <clears throat> which could cause uh, cavitation issues. So in an open system, we want to keep the suction piping as short as possible. Uh, in a closed system, um, it, it doesn't really apply because a closed right. system, you can't differentiate between the suction piping and the uh, supply piping. The only time we get into that nomenclature is when we get close to the pump. But when you're out in the system, you don't know if you're a suction or a uh, supply. Well, you do know if it's a supply or return pipe, but it's not critical in terms of the um, length of pipe relative to the uh, suction side of the pump. So pressure gauges, I, I touched upon this uh, uh, before. Um, uh, Rich, Rich has a great uh, presentation. He talks about some of the top, uh, top 10 uh, ways to uh, service a pump or, or I forget ex the exact title, uh, but you know, we get calls, our, our, our tech su support team gets calls. And uh, a lot of times, you know, after we calm people down, <laughs> uh, it, we need information, right? The team needs information. Well, uh, many times that information isn't available because there aren't any pressure gauges. Uh, uh, it's amazing how many times it's, it's not available, right, Rich? It's, so uh, make it, sure. Uh, so it's it's a lot of times the the uh, instrumentation, like you said, the pressure gauges are not physically there, and in some cases they're out of calibration. Right. And uh, you know, so it makes it very difficult to diagnose without some of this fundamental instrumentation. And, and uh, I remember we were talking about this topic one other time, and someone typed in uh, and make sure the pressure gauge is the right uh, right. Uh, how can I say this size for the application? Don't get zero to 500 psi if it's a zero to uh, 50 psi project or a zero to one. So make sure the gauge is uh, 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 sized correctly. I, I, I'm using the wrong word there. It's not really size, but uh, it's the range. The, yeah. Yes, the range. The range. The range. And uh, and so the general rule of thumb is that whatever the pressure is in your system should be roughly mid range on the gauge. So if the gauge goes from zero to 50 pounds, that tells us that the system pressure at that measuring point should be roughly around 25 pounds. And to, to, get, to Brett's point, you know, if you have put a 50 pound gauge on a system and the, the pressure at that measuring point is running day and night at 49 pounds, you're not gonna get a very good reading. So mid, mid range on the gauge. And like, like you said a minute ago, if it's zero to, if it's a 500 pound system, and mid-range would be roughly 250, and that's where the, uh, the gauge should be uh, sized for. And the other thing is that just for convenience, not it's not that critical, but the diameter of the gauge, it's nice to have a reasonable <laughs> diameter so you can read the gauge. <laughs> I, I, can't, I mean, I was- hard at, enough problems reading as it is. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, I was at a job site not too long ago. I, I swear, I don't know where they got these gauges from, but uh, they were about the size of the ones on my uh, portable air compressor back here at the house. And they must've been one inch in diameter. And that's, it's not easy to read those tiny numbers. Uh, so yeah, get a reasonable size <laughs> diameter gauge. <laughs> so we oh, did, um, uh, we did have a quick question that yep. came up. It was a great question. It says, uh, when and why should we use an FICI pump instead of a KSKV pump? Is it only <laughs> piping arrangement? I'm going to let you answer this one, Brett, because uh, um, there's a variety of answers. That, that, that's a great question, um, and, and we could probably talk from now till uh, 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 five o'clock, if it's five o'clock somewhere, about the answer to this. But yes, uh, piping arrangement is one of the one of the uh, uh, reasons that you would use one or the other. Um, space savings, uh, uh, office uh, office uh, recommend office uh, standards is another. Personal preference is another. Um, uh, personally. Personally, as much as I'm talking about FIs and CIs, and we sell a boatload of them on a, on a daily basis, or manufacture them, I should say, on a daily basis, I would probably specify the KB or KS uh, for other reasons as well, from a maintenance standpoint. Uh, uh, but uh, really, there's a whole myriad of answers uh, to that question. Uh, and uh, uh, by the way, the, uh, the base-mounted pumps, 
roughly go only go up to like fourth only only I'm saying only 4,000 GPM. So you think about it. That's that's a lot a big majority of projects um, that that you may be involved in. But if you get start getting above that, you need to look for a different model. And the the Takeo KS um, goes up to uh, over t uh, 10,000 uh, GPM, and then even higher is our uh, uh, split case pumps, uh, the GTs and TAs. Um, uh, so uh, personal preference. Um, the bottom line is a KB, KS, CI, FI uh, are all can can they all be used for condenser water, chilled water, hot water, um, closed loop, open loop, uh, and really um, uh, the, the answer lies uh, at your doorstep. Uh, anything to add to that, Rich? <laughs> yeah, I would echo uh, all of the things that you said. Uh, from a personal point of view, I kind of like the KS, KV because the service is a little bit easier and the startup is a little bit easier. And, and I say that from the perspective of an FI pump as a base mounted pump and it does require field alignment as opposed to a KS, KV, well, I'll say specifically the KS. The KS pump is all machine fit, so it does not require field alignment. So that makes startup a little bit easier, takes up a little bit less time. But I love both uh, styles, I, I think they're, uh, they like you said they each have their their place in the world and and and, and there's many 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 uh, hundreds of thousands of them out and out there working fine all of them both sides so uh, uh, just keep that in mind uh, so we did have a quick comment uh, regarding the gauges from Jim uh, he's uh, recommending a compound gauge possibly needed and I agree with that especially especially if you are uh, putting a a gauge on the suction side of an open system pump. So if you're pumping from a cooling tower to the pump and the cooling tower is not that high above the center line of the pump, it's nice to have a compound gauge in case you're running in the, the negative pressure range. So yeah, that's a great observation. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. It wasn't Jim Prisby. We don't have to give him two gold stars, do we? Yeah, we do. Oh, uh, it was Jim Prisby? Oh, my yeah. God. Another we owe him star. like 10 gold stars today. <laughs> Maybe I'll buy him uh, buy him dinner instead. So we, uh, Yeah, uh, Jim, whenever Jim has a great recommendation, we owe him a half of a sub sandwich from the Subway. Uh, <laughs> I think the, the six-inch, what are the six-inch Subways, and they're like $2.98. We don't, he doesn't get the drink and the fries. I'm sorry, the drink and the chips with that. Chips. You know, <laughs> no we cookie. only owe him the sandwich itself. So we're so, actually uh, getting close to wrap up yeah. here. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess got a couple more uh, uh, flow control. I'll, I'll just talk a couple of simple bullets here. Um, uh, please make sure um, uh, you never put a, a, a flow control valve on the suction side. Use a valve on the discharge side, all right, to control the flow. Obviously, you got to shut off valves and all of that, but you don't want any type of um, uh, flow control on the suction side, only on the discharge. You start controlling that flow on the suction side, um, you're gonna starve the pump or or, or something uh, bad is, is gonna happen. So never use a valve on the suction side for this uh, purpose. Obviously nowadays, I mean, this is an older uh, uh, kind of slide, but it's important to go over these things. BFDs, right? Uh, uh, personally, if I was specifying pumps now, and we're not the only manufacturer that does this. I would probably specify a, a, a self-sensing type of product. And other people call it uh, something uh, different um, on, on all of my projects, on just about the majority of my projects now. So that way the pump comes with the VFD, boom. Uh, I, I, and it's easier to start up and, and whatnot. And again, in a couple of months, we'll be going over some of that. And then obviously, and it still happens today, not very often, you can uh, change flow control by trimming the impeller, right? So, uh, we've talked about this on some of our other presentations. The impeller has a, a maximum diameter of, say, 11 inches and a minimum diameter of 8 inches. And any it can be trimmed to any dimension in between of that um, uh, to, to help control flow if, if something's designed incorrectly. And uh, I've seen people put in bigger impellers or, or, or trim the impeller. Um, one thing, you can't add metal to an impeller um, very easily. At least I don't even know how you would do that. So, so, so you'd have to buy a, a full full impeller. So suction valves, we recommend gate valves. Um, they know they offer no resistance. 
You can provide a tight shut off. Uh, people use butterflies a lot, but they do apply a little uh, resistance. And sometimes things get uh, hung up on that butterfly or that uh, wafer that's in there. So, uh, so something to consider. You know, it's an easy change. It could be an easy change on your MEP drawings and your de details. Uh, and uh, we already talked about the uh, centrifugal pumps and, uh, you know, smooth laminar flow. Uh, turbulence uh, reduces efficiency, wear and tear, increases wear and tear uh, on the pump seals and other components and uh, other comp things can happen as well. And uh, by the way, uh, our, uh, we have minimal replacement parts uh, for, for all of our, uh, all of these pumps down here, uh, including some of the verticals. That's all the replacement parts you need, some gaskets and, and some seals uh, to, to, to ser service all of those. So uh, something there. I finally got the question. And it's only one o'clock. I did pretty good, Rich. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty you good. did right on the nose here. So um, before we say goodbye for the day, Keiko Tuesday day, do we have any last minute questions that someone wants to type in that we can answer for you? I'm not getting anything new for questions, Brett. So Excellent. at this point, um, I'm going to let Brett say goodbye, and then I'll I'll close it out in a few seconds here. Brett, say your goodbyes. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, everybody. Appreciate your time. Uh, ho hope you got something out of it. Uh, we talked products today, right? We so that that was today's. Uh, I think our next one's uh, on one of Rich's favorite topics is MPSH, if I'm not mistaken. In a couple of weeks, uh, so uh, come back, come back again, come back again, please, come please. And by the way, by the way. I will be having, my wife and I, uh, tonight, will be having fresh spinach from our garden, our fourth helping of fresh garden spinach. At, wow, uh, this that's uh, early in the I season. know. I, I pl and I planted these from seed. All my plants have been planted from seed. Do you have a greenhouse or something? Or I, I do. I do. I, I, I start them indoors. And, uh, oh, yeah, I've, uh, I've really stepped it up. So thank you, nice. everybody. Sorry to digress. Rich, take it away. Well, thanks everyone for participating in Takeo Tuesday. And we appreciate all the great questions that you guys had. If you need some additional information, please don't hesitate to contact your local rep. They usually can answer 110% of your questions. Uh, but if for some reason that they would like to get additional support, uh, they know that uh, Brett and I and other folks at Takeo are available. So again, thanks for joining us and have a great afternoon. Goodbye for now. Bye, everybody.